Welcome to Trick Your CNC Out, where I talk about the various ways you can improve upon the stock configuration of your Winfinity Elite. Today, add a vertical table. So as you've probably seen with some of the other videos, uh, the way I have the vertical table set up, it is sitting in one of the spots that my wasteboard slats typically cover up. So under normal circumstances, I don't have to give up table space for this. And then um, those slats are just held down by these, these uh, the, you know, M5 cap screws that get into these shredded inserts. And in this case, in this last one, it's a little bit different. There are six of them that hold down that, that chunk of wasteboard here, here, and then over there at the end. And <clears throat> the other row of these, or their column, I guess, maybe is more appropriate, of these threaded inserts is a little bit more narrowly set is for the rotary. And um, and normally, uh, when I'm not using them, I just store them, you know, the wasteboard and the rotary right here. And they just kind of built in shelving into my table so I have a convenient place to store stuff. And then I just happen to have scrap aluminum here too, for the most part. So, um, so that's, you know, how I have this set up with, you know, kind of a versatile multi-purpose setup here. I can use it for, to get the full width of the table. I can use it for vertical and I can use it for rotary and all in that same spot. Now, um, the installation of this was a little bit touchy. I'll kind of go through that at the end, probably, um, at least closer to the end. And, you know, to begin with, I'll just go through kind of how how I have this set up. You can see there's a lot of a lot of dog holes in this thing, so it is um, it's set up so that I can align stock at various angles that I felt like I would probably want to use. I didn't go with a system that just gives me every five or ten degree increments because I wasn't really sure I would want to do that. I mean, for example, I might want to do 22 and a half degrees and that five degree increments wouldn't really help me do that. Now, there are also some, some spots here for F clamps. And one mistake that I made actually um, is that I didn't plan for the, in the table design to accommodate those F clamps. Uh, so this top brace that runs along here under the table which this, uh, the vertical table itself is mounted to, I can't get, I didn't cut that out. So while I have a hole here for F clamps right at the top, which I think is a great place to have it in this, this piece of wasteboard, it's unusable at this point because I haven't got a place, you know, it's, it's blocked from behind. I can't actually put an F clamp in there. So if I ever do decide I wanna, I really wanna use this or this slot, I'll have to route those out or something so I can actually get an F clamp through there. So, um, so that's the mistake I made. I would say, hey, think about that ahead of time and don't make that mistake in your setup. Um, and you know, while I used the Armor double-sided T-Track on the top, I did not do that on the bottom. I used the uh, Armor T-Track still, but I just used the regular one-sided stuff held in by the screws and uh, it still has these notches cut out, so it's easier to put and, and you know, insert and remove clamps without having to do everything from the end. Um, the model itself for this, this piece here, I believe has these uh, countersunk holes in place. I only put them at the corners of the wasteboard because I didn't want to have a chance to warp the wasteboard by inserting, you know, by tightening one more than the other, the middle one more than the outside ones and, and creating a bow or something along those lines. So I figured it was just easiest to manage if I only did it at the corners. And then the last feature that you can see here is when I first did this, I didn't have these lines traced out and it was very confusing to understand what holes went to what. So I ended up just, just tracing those on and they're actually, they're engraved. I think I used the trace feature to do that in, in Fusion 360. And, um, and you know, that, that makes it much more clear and easy for me to understand 
uh, I no longer wonder what hole goes to what. I tried to design this so that I could accommodate the most of the configurations that I could dream up in this setup. And of course, there's a height limitation to whatever my table is set at, so that's a thing. Um, but I can potentially cut multiple pieces of stock at a time, and I've accounted for that in a couple different ways. I'll kind of touch on that as we go here. First, I have um, just a sample piece here that we'll, we'll look at. If I just want to do vertical, I can cut, put a piece right there and clamp it down, and I can cut there. I can also do it on this side. So I got two. But there's another vertical I can use here in the center, which gives me two more. And one more vertical over here, which gives me a total of six pieces of stock that I could potentially cut at one time and uh, saving me setup time in, in if I have a job where I have to cut multiple pieces that are the same or, or similar, at least mounted similarly. I try to do the same thing for angles, but angles are a bit more tricky. I'll kind of show you what the 45s look like. And you can see here, I have traces going from you know, showing this 45 degree, uh, these 45 degree lines. So I'm gonna move one of these dogs to a 45 right there uh, and I could have gone further down there as well and then I'm going to move another one of these dogs uh, to try to stay in the same angle here and I'll remove this one because it could be in the way so now I can cut um, a piece out of 45 here which this is why I left this empty spot here on the side of my table so that stock cut on an angle can extend into there without banging into a drawer or something along those lines. And then I can also put a piece here um, on this on this set of dogs. So um, I could probably do that on the bottom side as well. Maybe not on this one, but on this one I you know, potentially could. Maybe that's pushing it a little bit, but it's possible. So that's the general idea for what I have here in this in this vertical table setup. The tricky part of the install was making sure that it all went in square so that I didn't have you know the the table out of square the vertical table out of square with the cutting surface of the CNC and that I had the 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 vertical orientation of the of those dogs perfectly plumb with respect to the orientation of the, the tabletop. Otherwise, my 90 degree line could have been a 91 degree line or something along those lines, and that would be devastating for anything that I was cutting. So I did um, put this in, you know, put it together in sort of a weird way, I guess. I didn't put this bottom piece here um, right there in place until I had the, I had it all squared. So I left that loose and, uh, and didn't secure it and brace it in place until the, the vertical table was perfectly square the way I wanted it. And at the same time, I recognize this is wood and wood moves and I put this in with new lumber. So I'm sure it has moved already. Um, I will check it when I use it to make sure that it is still acceptable and uh you know if i i don't know maybe it would have been a better deal to build the whole table out of aluminum but i just didn't go that path i the whole shop here is has the cabinetry built out of out of this material and i wanted it all to match so that's the route that i went here we are on my patreon page and you can see this is where you can find the vertical table setup you could buy it for $9 or you can subscribe to the digital downloads tier for $9 and get access to all of this stuff as well as the, as well as the things I upload in the future. Um, if we click into this, what you'll see here, um, you get access to, with this download, it includes the STL file for the wasteboard setup itself. So you could just throw it in your cam software, create the tool paths and go. I would certainly recommend testing the whole diameters for your dogs. And again, I'm using the Tool Theory dogs. There'll be a link in the description to the, those dogs with a 10% discount code. And then um, you also get the DXF file for the sketch that is these uh, 
all these angles so you can see that as well and you can choose whether or not you want to cut that. But that's what it is. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.